So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do some basic survey analyses. And here we have a survey that you can get as well on the course website. It's called selfesteem.excel, and I've already imported it in here. And it contains five items measuring self-esteem, and then something you won't have in your data file, but I'll include in here is five items surveying narcissism. That will come into an analysis at the very end. But for the most part, we're just going to concentrate on these items. And where these items came from, and where these items came from was from a self-esteem measure, which I'll show you right here. And each of these items just has the question at the top and then all the people's item responses. One means strongly disagree and a five means strongly agree. So here we have measures of self-esteem, like on the whole, I'm satisfied with myself. At times, I think I'm no good at all. That would be negative self-esteem or low self-esteem. I feel I have a number of good qualities. I am able to do most or do things as well as most other people. And I don't feel I have much to be proud of. So you'll notice we actually have two in here at times I think I'm no good at all and I don't feel I have much to be proud of that are actually reverse scored. They're measuring low self-esteem. So the first thing we need to do in SurveyMonkey, or sorry, StatCrunch, is to take these two and reverse score them. And what that means is if someone says a one out of five to at times I think I'm no good at all, that actually indicates high self-esteem. So we want to switch that one to a five. And if someone answered a five to this, that's indicative of low self-esteem, so we want to turn that 5 into 1, so that across the entire scale, a 1 means low self-esteem and a 5 means high self-esteem. So to do that, we're going to do a little bit of mathematics. So go to Data, Compute, Expression, and we're going to go ahead and build our expression. So to flip a 5-point scale, well, first off, we're going to put what item we want to flip. So go ahead and add the first one. At times, I think I'm no good at all. But then to flip it, to turn a 1 into a 5 and a 5 into 1, and also the middle like a 2 into a 4 and a 4 into a 2, what you first do is you multiply it by negative 1. That way it flips it. So if you have a 5, it turns it into a negative 5. And then you add 6, or you add one more onto it than is included in the scale. So since it's a 5-point scale, we're including 6, or adding 6 to it. So here if someone has a 5, we want to make it into a 1, turns it first into a negative 5, and the negative 5 plus 6 equals 1. Same thing happens if we want to turn a 1 into a 5. What happens is that we have a negative 1, or sorry, a 1 here, we make it into a negative 1, and then by adding 6, it turns into a 5. So it totally flips our scale. So this is just a handy little equation that you always use when you want to flip a scale. You first times it by negative 1, and then add one more point, then is how many points are in the scale. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And we're going to call this uh, the reverse score version of at times I think I'm no good at all. So what we can do is just copy this and add this into the com label, but put a little R in front of it, just indicating that's reverse scored. So go ahead and hit compute, and it'll put it right here at the end. It's after the narcissism here. That's fine. And then to do the other one, you can just go options, edit, go back to build. And here, just take out that first item, and we'll just do the same equation to the second item that needs to be reverse scored, which is, I don't feel I have much to be proud of. So you can click OK, and here again, just take that title and plop it into the column label, but make sure to keep that R for reverse scored, and do another compute. So there you have your two items that you've reverse scored. By the way, you can also move these around by clicking on uh, Edit, Move, Oh, sorry, columns, move. And then you can select both of these and move them before or after anywhere you want. Let's go ahead and just put it before here so it's we have all the self-esteem items together. So hit compute and it just moves them right there. And then all the narcissism ones are still over here. You don't have to do that, but it's just, I think, kind of handy to see them all together. So now that we have that, we might want to start doing some reliability analyses. And one reliability analysis we can do is called split half reliability. And basically, that's just taking half the items. So maybe in this case, it'd be items one, two, and three, and uh, making a total score out of it. And then taking the other half of the items, making their own total score. So that'd be like four, item four plus five. And then you run a correlation between two sets. And so what you're assuming is if the one scale is measuring one thing, in this case, self-esteem, then half the scale should measure or correlate highly with what the other half of the scale is measuring. So you always expect with split half reliability that the two halves of the scales are highly uh, positively correlated. 
that's a good indication that half your scale correlates with the other half, which it always should. Now, in this case, we're only ever going to use the reverse scored versions of these items. So for the rest of the analyses, we're actually just going to ignore these two right here. The at times I don't feel good at all and I don't feel much to be proud of. And instead, we'll use these reverse scored versions of it. Because uh, here, they're all pointing in the same direction where one means low self-esteem and five means high self-esteem. So in order to do this correlation between the two halves, we first have to uh, get the sum total of items one through three and four and five. So here we're going to go data compute with expression. And we're just going to be adding up those first three items. So it's on the whole, I'm satisfied with myself Add column with the add key. And then instead of doing this original one at times, I think I'm no good at all. Add this one that has the R in front of it. So go ahead and add that and do the plus key, and then do the third one. I feel I have a number of good qualities to be proud of. All right, press OK, and you're just adding all these up. And you might want to also call this something, so you could call it like maybe self-esteem total one, because it's the total of the first half. Or you know what, we'll just call it, since that's not all going to show up, we'll just do SE total one. Hit compute, and it puts it right over there. And then again, we'll hit data, We'll compute the other half expression, and now we'll build the second half. So this one, you can use item number four. I'm able to do things as well as most other people. Plus, and instead of doing, I don't feel I have much to be proud of, do the reverse score to that version of that one. And again, hit OK, and we'll call this SE total two. So now you just have the total of the first half of the scale and the second half of the scale. And so the two should be correlated. So if someone has high self-esteem in the first half of the scale, they should also have high self-esteem in the second half of the scale. All right, to run that correlation, just go stat, summary stats, correlation, and enter in these two variables, SE total one and SE total two. And also put in the two-sided p-value so that it'll show if it's significant or not. So when you hit compute, it turns out that this is significant and in the direction we thought it would be in. So first off, it's significant because the p-value here in parentheses is well below 0.05. And it's positive because the correlation itself is a positive number. So just as we'd expect, the two halves of the same scale are positively correlated and very strongly correlated. You know, a 0.7 is definitely on the stronger end of correlation. So there we could say that these two halves of the scale have really good split half reliability. Now, if this wasn't significant, uh, then we would say that it has poor split half reliability because in that case, the two uh, halves of the same scale weren't measuring the same thing, but here they are. So that's great. We'll kind of keep that there as split half reliability. And the second type of reliability we can measure is called Kronbach's alpha reliability. In this one, you can't do directly in stat crunch. You have to do a little bit of an equation, but what we can do, I'll demonstrate that equation in a Word document here. The equation itself is pretty simple. I have another document, so I'll copy and paste it over here. So basically, you're taking some variances of the items. In some cases, the individual items, that's variance of K or individual item, and the variance of all the items together. So in this case, we just need a few things. And in fact, I'll make a version of this down here so we can kind of fill this in as we go along. So first thing, K is just the number of items. We know that already. So here we have five items that make up the self-esteem scale. So we'll put in a five there and a five there. So basically this first part of the equation is five over four or five fourths. In this one, uh, you need the V of K and the V of T. The V of K is all the variances for all the individual items. Here we have five items, so we'll put in five variances. We're gonna add them together. That's what this sigma or add sign means. So to get that, we can go to StatCrunch and get all the variances for all of these. So to do that, you go stat, summary stats, columns. And here, all we need is the variance of it. But make sure to only click on the correct variables. So here we have items one, three, and four are regular, and then we'll use the reverse scored versions of items two and five. And then hit compute, and it gives you all of these variances right here. Now we just want to add these up. And one of the easiest ways to add these up is if we open up a little Excel file, and we have this right here. Let me actually just make this on this side of the screen. We can kind of pop this in as well. 
So we can just basically, you know, we can even just copy and paste these in there. That way we get the most amount of variance. If you're gonna do this by hand, I would say just do it to like maybe the hundredth place when you're adding these up. But since we're gonna do this in Excel, we might as well just pop in the whole numbers. So now that they're in Excel, just use the simple function of equals sum, open parentheses, and then click and drag and select all of these, and then close the parentheses. So it's equal sum and then all the numbers here. We only have five items, so it's just five numbers. And so the sum total that we have is 5.26. We'll go ahead and round it there. So we'll go back to our equation, and basically we now know that the sum of all of our variances is 5.26. And now we just need the variance of total, which basically is we're going to add up all the variances, or sorry, we're going to add up all the, the scale items into one total and then take the variance of that. So here you'll notice we already have uh, two totals here. One is the total of the first half of the scale and the total of the second half of the scale. So an easy way to get the total for the full scale is just to add those together. So to do that, we'll go data, compute, with expression, and we're just going to add in total one plus total two. And let's just call it, let's say, oh, actually, we're gonna call it something in the next screen. Get rid of that little part. Go yeah, press okay. And we'll call it just SE total without anything added to it. So it's the true total. So see, there you go. It's just these two added together. And then we're gonna need the, the variance of that too. So we can use this box right here and this time we'll just pop in where it says, oh, I guess it's not in there. Maybe we have to make a new box. We can close that and just go back to data, or sorry, stat, summary stats, columns. Now it should be in there. Yep, there it is. And we just need the variance. So hit compute. And so the variance for that is 12.88. So we'll pop that in right here, 12.88. So basically, we have here uh, four over five, which actually we can compute that. I think it's 1.25. Let's see, five divided by four equals, yep, 1.25. So might as well put that in there, 1.25 times, and then we'll have a fraction here, or actually a decimal place number. So 5.26 divided by 12.88 equals 0. 408. And so if you take 1 minus 0 0.408, it's 1 minus 0 0.408, that is then going to equal 0 0.29, or sorry, 592. And then the final number, basically you just take this number and times it by 1.25. Oops, 1.25, there we go. And so our final number and this is what the Chrome box alpha actually is, is going to equal 0 0.74. So this is the number that you want. And basically, if the Chrome box alpha is at or above 0.7, then you say it has good inter-item reliability, meaning all the items are measuring the same thing, which is what you want for a scale. If this was below 0.7, then you'd say that the scale had poor inter-item reliability. And maybe you'd want to go back through and check to see if all your items are really measuring the same thing. So I know it's a little bit of a long process because you can't just do it in one go in StatCrunch, but basically you just use this equation, figure out the variance for all the items individually, and then figure out the variance for the total of all the items. And you can plug it in and figure out your Chromebacks alpha. So now that we've figured out, here's the split half reliability, which is good because the two halves of the, the same scale are correlated highly with each other, and the Chromebacks alpha, which is also good because your Chromebacks alpha score is 0.7 or higher, at this point, you might just be interested to see what the scale really looks like in terms of how extroverted people are. So let me get rid of some of these. One of the best ways to figure out the average uh, self-esteem score in this case is to take this total and then divide it by how many items you have. So here, for example, you have a person with a total of 25 points across five items. So if you take 25 divided by five, you end up getting a total or sort of a mean score of five. And here it's a one to five scale, so that would be someone who's extremely high in self-esteem. And so we'll go and do that with all the items, just with data, compute, expression. 
And here we're just going to take our self-esteem total and then divide it by the total number of items, which in this case is five. And so uh, we'll go ahead and click OK and then put in here SE average because this is the average of their self-esteem scores. You can hit compute. There it is. And you can see just looking at it, most of our people are high in self-esteem, somewhere above a three. But we have some people who are low in self-esteem too, like this 2.8 person right here. But if we wanted to see what the mean standard deviation of our self-esteem is in our group, then just go data, or sorry, stats, summary stats, columns. We'll enter in this SE average. And then we'll just do in mean and standard deviation since that's what we usually do. Go and click OK. It looks like we have a total of 74 people in this sample. The mean is pretty high self-esteem, about a four out of five. And the standard deviations, you know, not that high, meaning that most of the people cluster right around a four. So you probably get some variants where people are about a three to five on this scale on average. So that's how you look at all of the statistics for an individual scale. So we got the uh, split half reliability, the inner item reliability with the Chromebox Alpha, and then calculated people's average scores to take a look at what that looks like. Now the last step you might want to do in verifying that your scale is measuring what you think it is, is to correlate it with another scale that should be correlated with your variable. So since we measured self-esteem, one variable that's usually positively related with self-esteem is narcissism. Because some people with high self-esteem are actually narcissistic, meaning they have an aggrandized or inflated sense of self-esteem. So here I have a narcissism measure. I'm not going to go into each of the individual items, but basically I'm going to skip ahead here and create an average score for these as well. And then we'll skip right to the end where we have basically a narcissism average, which will be over here, a self-esteem average. And then uh, we'll go ahead and see if these two are correlated as expected. So we'll go ahead and skip ahead now. Okay, so now I have both the self-esteem averages, and now I also have the narcissism averages, and I just copied those steps I did before, where I reverse scored a couple of items, and then I added them all up with just the reverse scored ones, uh, and then the other ones, and divided by five again, because this is another five item scale. So to, just to see if these two are correlated as expected, uh, which we expect a positive correlation between self-esteem and narcissism, uh, just again go to stat, summary stats, correlation, and just pop in those two, self-esteem average and narcissism average. And again, do the two-sided p-value, click compute, and it looks like our hypothesis was confirmed. So they are positively correlated because this number is positive, the R coefficient, and this number is at or below 0.05, here it's 0.03, so it's significant. And with self-esteem and narcissism, you wouldn't expect a correlation to be too high because obviously a lot of people have normal self-esteem that's not narcissistic, but the two are somewhat correlated as expected. So that means that our self-esteem measure is probably doing a good job measuring self-esteem and not something else. And if you were gonna have a variable that was negatively related with self-esteem, let's say like depression, then you could do the same thing where you run a, a depression school, uh, scale, get its average, run the correlation, and then you'd expect a significant negative correlation between those two um, uh, variables or scales. And that's how you would test convergent and divergent validity. Convergent validity is when you're assessing something that should be positively correlated with your scale, like self-esteem and narcissism, and divergent validity is when you're assessing something that's negatively correlated with your scale, like between self-esteem and depression scores. So there you have it. There's a couple of reliability uh, uh, estimates like split half and Chrome box, and also a simple validity test just to see if your scale is correlated as expected with other scales.